half in the bag. All right, back up running. Oh, good. So how's your NFT going? Uh, surprisingly well, actually. Oh. Considering that I don't know what an NFT is, mm. but it's got a bunch of bids. Top Hat Monkey is officially up for sale. It's for sale on about 150 or so different types of cryptocurrency. Is that good? I still don't know what cryptocurrency is. No. <laughs> Again, Jay, this is my first crack at this. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, oh my God, I got a bid. A pretty sizable bid. Oh. Someone wants to buy my Top Hat Monkey NFT for 175 million crypto bucks. Some guy named Elon Musk. I, I don't know who that is. I don't know who it is either, but he's Elton offering- Elton John? Not Elton John. Oh. He's, he's, uh, Elon Musk is offering me 175 million or billion crypto bucks. Oh. For my Top Hat Monkey NFT. Should I take the offer? I don't want you to get taken advantage of, Mike. Uh, he's saying the offer is only valid for another 30 seconds, Jay. Oh my God, oh my God. And I don't know how long this keyboard is gonna work for. I, uh, the enter button still works, okay? Uh, um, okay. Uh, well, I, oh, shit. I can't type words without the, the letters. Oh. I can, I can hit enter, Jay. Oh, crypto bucks just tanked in the stock market. They're worth nothing now. Oh. Well, thank God for my Netflix stock. Every night, I dream the same dream. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is the 28th Marvel movie in 14 years. In addition to that, there's been five TV shows made for Disney Plus in the last two years. Hey, did you know that the James Bond franchise has been around for almost 60 years and there's been 27 movies in that time? Don't know why that popped into my head. Anyway, well, Mike, we ventured out back to the the beautiful, majestic, magical movie theater. We got the full theatrical experience, our first time back since uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. It's true. And it's exactly the same as it's always been. I think that my least favorite phrase in the English language is only in theaters. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I thought- I was okay with skipping the Batman because it's three hours. I watched that clip of the Joker I didn't understand what anyone was saying. <laughs> that deleted scene where they're just is, mumbling the whole time. I was like, well, deleted, that was, uh, was a prop propaganda. That was a con. That, that was to see if there's interest in another Joker there was this some, scene. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, well, two minutes, oh, I watched that. And I was uh, four hours later, I'm like, what are they talking about? <laughs> I can't understand anyone, I can't see anyone. No, no one's in focus. I can't see the Batman. I don't. I can't. I don't understand what the Batman is saying. I don't know what this guy's saying. It's like in front of the lens they put uh, uh, Mr. Magoo's glasses <laughs> and just shot the movie through that. <laughs> well, they were. It was artistically done to disguise the Joker's appearance. I get that. I get that. I'm not just stupid. <laughs> I'm not stupid. But um, well, I thought going to see Doctor Strange uh, for you would be a nice kind of re uh, reprieve from uh, Star Trek Picard, but then, God damn it, that old bag of bones Patrick Stewart showed up in this movie. <laughs> oh, tra trauma, <laughs> trauma, get away from me. <laughs> get away. No, 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 um, it's funny you mentioned that because I went back and I watched, and this will be a three-part review, I suppose, I went back and I watched Spider-Man Far From Home and No Way Home in preparation for this one. Yes, because I know the No Way Home sort of deals, not really, with the multiverse. I don't even know what that is. The multiverse is used as just a gimmick in that a, movie. A gimmick to have, have weird characters show up and things yeah. happen. Uh, but after watching nine hours of Star Trek Picard, uh, I fucking loved Far From Home. <laughs> okay. I, it was the most refreshing. Far From Home, not No Way Home. Uh, both. Okay. I, but I loved Far From Home much better. No Way Home is good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, uh, far From Home, I was like, oh my gosh, 
He's going on a field trip with all of his friends. So it's a little adventure. Uh, Martin Starr's there, J.B. Smoove. I mean, like, <laughs> and, and but, oh, but here comes, you know. So you're saying there's like a story and things It felt happen. like, and, and it was like, it was lighthearted. Uh, it felt like a... Uh, like a Richard Donner Superman kind of like when they go to um, they go to the Niagara Falls, you know, and <laughs> she Superman, Superman, and she's <laughs> just floating down the river to the ah, uh, you know, it, 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 and it, and all the quips and the jokes and yes, it doesn't take itself seriously, but and and you know like the the, the little third act twist with uh, where I was like oh Mysterio, you know, he's in this up and then I had this clever plot with the. the, the holograms and and I was like I, I, it made sense to me it was entertaining it had a beginning a middle and end and I really enjoyed both films the second uh, the third one uh, was a little darker I yeah I also watched No Way Home in preparation for this because it's multiverse related I hadn't, I hadn't seen that one before because I didn't really care but I love you guys thank you um, it, it was the the world's longest Super Bowl commercial. That's what it felt like to me. You know, when they do those like expensive commercials where they bring back like uh, uh, like Bill Murray and he recreates Groundhog Day. And you're like, I'm watching Bill Murray. I'm not watching that character. I'd, I'd rather not talk about this. No, I don't mean but to. Are you teasing me? No, 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 no. He's not teasing you. It's just that. I I wish I could tell you, but I just like I don't do it. Like I don't. Like, I don't do breathing. Like, breathing just happens. Whoa. That's how I felt with uh, uh, Tobey Maguire in this movie. I guess so. I, I, the highlight of the movie was Andrew Garfield. He was funny in it. And, and like, those guys, like, they were talking about the, the supervillains they fought and the, the jokes and... That scene felt to me like an SNL skit. It was and great. And they just left it all in, all the rambling uh, improv. Yes, the humor seemed to be a little too self-referential and kind of unrealistic. But I, I prefer that version of Spider-Man. Like the Andrew Garfield Spider-Mans were just like bad and yeah. not really fun. I, uh, the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans, of course, are great. Um, and when they showed up in this, it was just like uh, it got a little bogged down and meh at the end. Well, I was going to say what scaffolding. I to, we'll call it scaffolding. Scaffolding action, just scaffolding like Spider-Man action. Three. Yeah. Um, which I wanted to mention that. Like I watched No Way Home. I thought it was okay, uh, kind of forgettable, um, but after watching the new Doctor Strange, I liked it a lot more because the climax of that movie is, yeah, just on a construction site. Mm. It's not a cacophony of noise, um, which I was very disappointed that this movie turns into the classic uh, third act action movie uh, endless headache-inducing noise fest. I think a lot of that has to do with the script. Uh, the Spider-Man movies were written by Chris McKenna and Eric Summers wrote a lot of comedy stuff, uh, and this was written by a name I didn't recognize. Uh, he did write for Rick and Morty, so oh, okay. another comedy guy. Well, that's that's odd because there was wasn't a lot of comedy in it. It took no. itself very seriously, and and that's okay for this because I probably wouldn't want too much like like ha 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 you know what are you this is you multiverse blah 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 blah. Um, it wouldn't fit in this type of movie. Yeah. It works in Spider-Man because he's just a kid. He's like 16 years old and he doesn't understand adulthood, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, well, those are like, they're like teen comedies, basically. Yeah, and that's kind of Spider-Man's gimmick is that he's quippy and, and sarcastic and all that. But yeah. the, the comedy in this comes from goofy shit being played straight. The third act of this movie, I noticed in our theater, there was more than once people were laughing at the movie. And I was thinking to myself, Sam Raimi's back, baby. Get off her! To protect our world. Oh, God. Yeah, so you wanted to watch this because it's directed by Sam Raimi, which I understand. Um, and there were some little Sam Raimi... Uh, hallmarks that that shone through mm -hmm. the, the, the murky noise of the it, multiverse. It was pretty much what I expected, which was a Sam Raimi hired gun to make an MCU movie. That's basically what it is. It's a little weirder. I mean, the third act is like gothic monster magic nonsense, which is a little bit different. Well, that, no, well that's um, where he comes through is, uh, you know, you've got, un, well, a spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. 
Doctor Strange. Spoiler alert. Why are you so angry to give a spoiler out warning? The, who's out there? Who's out there? Uh, I mean, you have a couple of camera angle tricks, you know, the, the Sam Raimi camera movements. Zoo, yeah. zip, zoo. A couple of direct nods. Uh, Scarlet Witch puts her hand up to a mirror and then it goes in it like it's water, which is right out of Evil Dead. And the, ah, yeah, like, At you know, some point, she looks like an Evil Dead hag. <laughs> I think they're like, well, we got some witches in this. So we got some ghouls. Um, at one point, uh, Doctor Strange from a different universe is dead. And he reanimates his corpse, and he's got the ripped open jaw, like you know the the Evil Dead bad guy, like the uh, oh evil, in Army of Darkness, the Evil, evil Ash. Ash. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's one of the parts that people were laughing at. He's given like a like a heartfelt, uh, empowering speech, and it's just this close up of this rotting corpse talking. Yeah, and yeah, and he's like. He was trying to deliver the dialogue, and, and he's, he sounds like a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, when anyone's like a like an undead uh, character in a Sam Raimi movie, they start talking like a pirate. Right. I don't know why that is. Pick yourselves up and Sally fuck! I got a bone to pick with you. Said so like, <laughs> should sound like more wispy and gross, but they all sound how Sam Raimi wants them to sound. I'm surprised they're not just dubbed over by Sam Raimi. I possess the Necronomicon. I've crushed a pathetic army. Now I'll have my vengeance. Uh, it, it felt very long, and uh, I, 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 I was never really huge on Doctor Strange. It's weird. I remember we did the first Doctor Strange movie, and I remember thinking that like, visually it was interesting, but character-wise, I didn't really care about Doctor Strange. Right. I liked him more in the movies where he's like a side character. I think he works better as that. I, I like that he's um. Yeah, he works good as a side character. I like that he's kind of like annoyed a lot and crusty. Mm -hmm. That's sort of like his character traits. He's not like, he doesn't act mystical and like ethereal. And he's like, I am Doctor Strange. And he doesn't act too heroic. He's just yeah. sort of like, what do you want? He's very Bruce Campbell-ish. That's true. Um, and I like him as a side character. And then in this, uh, as, as, as the lead, they had, they had two like things to ground you. Uh, emotionally as an audience member and that's Doctor Strange and uh, he's is, he is still in love with uh, Jennifer Garner <laughs> who is that? Uh, uh, Rachel McAdams Rachel McAdams they, all, these, all these white ladies look alike <laughs> Rachel McAdams Jennifer Garner is Electra. remember that hit? there's a little Daredevil cameo in uh, No Way Out there was I like that <laughs> did y'all notice that? The Daredevil cameo, or yeah, whatever. I didn't even notice it. Someone had to tell me. You didn't notice it? What are you, blind? So he, uh, Doctor Strange is in love with Jennifer Garner and they, they want, the, uh, he, in every universe, his romance with her fails because he's gotta be Doctor Strange. And then Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff, uh, wants to live with her fictional children. Which, if you didn't watch WandaVision, that whole storyline, you'd just be like, what? They kind of explain it a little. It's but, fine. They explain barely. it a little. So, so it's like, the, the, and then that's the, the base. And then our other character, um, a girl named America, who has the power to open up, to jump between multiverses. Yes. Nobody else can do it. It's kind of like her mutant superpower. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, but she doesn't really know how to use it. So she's the key, and Wanda becomes the villain. And Wanda, Wanda wants to go into the universe where she lives with her fictional children. Yes, because she wants to be happy. In other universes, those children actually exist, which completely undermines WandaVision, the show. I think she used the dark arts. Uh, she used the Necronomicon <laughs> to look into red bubbles of energy, and she looked into one red bubble, and she saw that that's where she lived in a happy TV show with her fake children. Is that supposed to be like retroactively that explains the setup for WandaVision? Because that's something? what when 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 Doctor Strange opens up the Necronomicon, the the, the little bubbles appear, and he looks around. Mm -hmm. But there's a pay, a price to pay 
when you play with the Necronomicon is that you get black fingernail tips. Uh, sure. And you turn evil and you become obsessed and uh, you become evil Spock. You become evil Spock. Yeah. I also noticed uh, in addition to Patrick Stewart, there's the character of Black Bolt that mm -hmm. shows up on the council or whatever in this. Yeah. Uh, that actor is Pike on the new Star Trek show. Anson Mount? I guess. I had no idea who the fuck he was. I wish my name sounded like a sex position. <laughs> that was my favorite scene, though, when he gets put in front of the the the, uh, the Avengers of a different universe, the, the Illuminati. All that stuff was fun. It's a movie with a kind of messy and not very engaging story. But lots of... Filled, filled with neat little things. Lots of neat little things, yes. yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And that whole section was great and gets surprisingly violent for a Marvel PG-13 movie. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> we, yeah, we don't want to talk too much about that. But yeah, Jim from The Office shows up. John Krasinski as uh, Mr. Fantastic. I'm assuming he's going to be in the new Fantastic Four film. I guess that, yeah. I think they're making one. Eventually they're going to make one. Of course they're going to make one. And they'll be a, they're going to bring back Josh Trank. They're going to give him another chance. <laughs> and then there's going to be a movie about a multiverse where they meet those Fantastic Fours and the Jessica Alba Fantastic Fours. Oh my God. Which will be really confusing because Chris Evans is in that Fantastic Four right. with Jessica Alba. And Jessica Alba's in this one playing Doctor Strange's love interest. Uh, but yeah, that sequence, that's when we get the Patrick Stewart cameo. And the Professor X shows up. Uh, Professor X shows up. And that was... I didn't watch the X-Men animated show in the 90s, but they play his theme for a second. Yeah. That's like <laughs> da -da 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 ultimate da -da 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 pandering. But He's in a yellow, his yellow X-Men like hover chair mm -hmm. instead of his like stupid metal Brian Singer chair. Nobody wants to get in the Brian Singer chair. So many different wacky, crazy set pieces in this, like uh, the, the Wanda attacking the the compound with all the wizards, mm -hmm. and then the big fight at the end, and then flying through the multiverse, and then walking around the, the land of Oz or something. <laughs> New York City's become, you know, the the Munchkin Village. Well, that's that's when they're in the other universe. But well, that's a, that's a complaint. I, I assume this movie was going to be about them like hopping universes. They basically go to one other universe, and that's where they spend most of the movie. There's a quick sequence where they're kind of falling through them, and you see like yeah. in one they're paint, and one that's it's fun. like a, a silent film. I would have liked to have seen like a little, a little globe-trotting adventure where they go to all these different weird lands. Uh, uh, what, what was missing was a montage. They're looking for something, mm -hmm. and then you, you know, like you, you know, a scene where somebody's like, like hunting down something, and they 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 stop by you know this place. They stop by the grocery store. Sure. They stop by the post office. Get, get a little a little I, joker. I'm, I'm little... trying to find this kid. Have you seen him? Yeah. No, nope, Mister, I haven't. Whoop. And they go somewhere else, and yeah, sure. and they're, they're just popping through universes looking for something. But yeah, they go, and there's a world of little people made out of donuts that go. Bum, 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 bum. I can't understand what the donut's saying. <laughs> out of there, you know. <laughs> that's all we got for that scene. Move on. That there is a brief sequence where it's like I don't know, you know, it's, everything's turning and the cities are upside down, and I think there's something like that in Spider-Man: No Way Home. Reality is collapsing, and when it's like the, everything's turning, and I get well, that, like that, there's a lot of that in the first Doctor Strange movie. Yeah, yeah, that that kind of stuff I get like nauseated and bored with, but I prefer the characters talking to each other. Yeah, saying lines of dialogue to each other. You mean like scenes in a movie? Scenes in a movie talking to each other, or somewhere like really kind of like hmm, forward thrusting storyline. That, that's the biggest problem with this movie is that it doesn't. I, the 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 Wanda plotline just to me felt kind of junky and weird coming off of WandaVision because that's a show with like a real clear idea yeah. and a real strong uh, kind of creative vision no pun intended for the way the show plays out 
where it's all about it's it's kind of thoughtful it's about like grief and her kind of coming to terms yeah and it's it's really like character driven until it kind of becomes a marvel movie at the end but for the most part it's like a genuinely engaging kind of character story and then you get to this movie and it's just, ah, she's evil now. She's bad lady. I, I think It that, just kind of undermines the whole show. I think that would have been a, a really nice way to kind of fix this script would be to shrink down a lot of the ultra-violent action and uh, fighting at the end. And because the first time Doctor Strange runs into Wanda, he goes and sees her and she's like in a, she's on a farm with sheep and apple orchard clipping apple and it turns out and... she's it's all an illusion she's already the monster witch yeah been corrupted it felt um, like you were missing something so so like a handful of scenes back and forth where dr strange is maybe talking to her and she's by herself and she's on she's on the real farm and and she, we we almost get a like a better recap of the wandavision story yeah and she keeps dreaming of the kids and then she's like well maybe i'll open up this book and like the the fall to the dark side mm-hmm. of her character, uh, uh, seeing that happen almost in real time um, would have made me a little more sympathetic to her. I did like the fact that she wasn't like monster of the week. Like I'm Gorgon, the blah blah, and I'm I'm I want the the book because I'm evil. Right. I, it wasn't that. It, it was character. Both um, bad good guy bad guy were were emotionally driven which is a good start it just the pieces needed to be rearranged a little and then some stuff in the heads of the movie needed to be fleshed out better yeah especially wanda our main villain because her being evil and just because she's more or less a villain in the comic books i think she's kind of wavers back and forth she's yeah. one, of, one of those well even though you empathize with her on wandavision what she's doing is so extremely fucked up like right. she's a sympathetic character, but she is a villain. Yeah, she started off as a bad guy in the Marvel movies. Yeah, and then so she's sort of like, like a chaotic, neutral kind of character. Um, and so her being the villain in this is really fitting and kind of neat because she's so powerful. Could have just been a Wanda movie with Doctor Strange as a supporting character. Maybe as it is, it's kind of like sixty percent Doctor Strange, and then the rest is Wanda. Yeah. Even though she's way more interesting than him. And the only thing going for Doctor Strange is that his marriage to Jessica Chastain didn't quite work out. Yeah. And Which he, you don't even really care about because those two actors have like zero chemistry together. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> was she in the first Doctor Strange movie? She was. I, I don't remember if they worked better than that, but here it was like a flat line. Your desecration of reality. I was curious because it was Sam Raimi and he hasn't directed a movie in so long and there's some fun Sam Raimi stuff in it, but it's not a great follow-up to WandaVision and it's not a great Sam Raimi movie, but it's a fine movie, I guess. If it were just like direct to Disney Plus, I'd say, yeah, watch it. But as far as a a theatrical experience... A lot of people were really hard on this. I know, I know. All the visual effects and all the... I was excited to see uh, uh, Bob Murawski, who's the usual Sam Raimi editor. I assumed that this was like a Marvel product, so we would have nothing to do with this, but good old Bob Murawski edited the movie. There's a little uh, Easter egg when they're flying through the different multiverses. There's a taxi with a billboard on it for Grindhouse releasing, which is... Bob Murawski's uh, film restoration company. Do you know where the term Easter egg comes from? I don't, actually. Is it a reference to Critters 2? No, no, it's a reference to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. While they were filming the Rocky Horror Picture Show, uh, the cast and crew, uh, it was Easter, and they decided to have an Easter egg hunt on the set. And the, they left their kids in, and they all looked around, and found, and, but they didn't find all of the Easter eggs. So if you watch the Rocky Horror Picture Show, you can see Easter eggs in lots of the shots, like under chairs and in different spots. Is this true? I did not know that. Look it up, bitch.
you know, I liked it enough. Um, I, I, I thought a lot of it was fun. I thought it could have used a little more humor. Um, I, I was really, it was very refreshing to watch those last two Spider-Man movies. I really enjoyed them. They're funny. Um, this one did, it felt a little darker for a Marvel movie, um, and it could have used a little, a little uh, touch of humor here and there. Could have pulled some things out, fixed the beginning a little, give Wanda some more backstory. But all the um, the jumping around, it, while it didn't go to multiple universes, mm -hmm. it didn't didn't linger too long in each scene before it moved or set piece before it moved to the next thing. Yeah. Which kept it going. I mean, um, by the time you get to the third act, to me, that was a problem, though. That's where things felt really rushed. A little and like, bit, yeah. Like, there's moments, like we say, there's lots of cool things sprinkled throughout. Like, like undead Doctor Strange making a cape out of demon ghosts is awesome. Yeah. But it, it happens really quick, and then it cuts back to Wong or something, and then it cuts to uh, America Ch Chavez. It's just, like, all over the place. It's like, ugh. Yeah, it I like the climax of No Way Home, where it's like everybody's just fighting in a construction site. A little more simple, it's sure. a, Yeah, keep, keep it simple, because oh. by the end of this, it's just, like, constant noise. Again, I like the idea of... Uh, Doctor Strange and Evil Doctor Strange are doing their like music fight. Yeah. They're like throwing musical notes. I was like, this is a really neat idea. It kind of comes out of nowhere because I don't think Doctor Strange has any history of music. But well, that's that was fine. his 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 uh, counterpart in that universe was the musical Doctor Strange. Okay, well, because they set it up with uh, all the. There's a shot I noticed that, that very prominently in the frame was an old timey like. Victrola oh, yeah. re uh, record player, yeah. and then he has the piano there, and you saw the piano. And so that Doctor Strange musical notes are sort of like runes to him, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah. It's fine. It's visually, Again, it's a uh, neat sequence, but it, it's like a minute long, and then we got to keep moving. And it's like, eh. I guess. It just got a little exhausting towards the end, as opposed to, uh, I mean, like the Evil Dead movies have kind of a breakneck pace to them, but... They're a lot simpler as far as what they're focusing on. So cutting back on some things here, there, like there's probably a way to write out that America character altogether, but I guess you got to have her in there, right? I don't know. You got to have lesbian parents that you can easily cut out of foreign markets, but they're in there. <laughs> they're yeah. in there, you everybody. That scene right out. <laughs> it sucked them right out into the multiverse. <laughs> That's what China did. Can I go now? <laughs> Are you done with me? What else is going on in the Marvel Universe? They just finished Moon Knight, that show that literally nobody's watched. Right, I, I, I saw the trailer for it like a couple months ago, and I was like, oh, I, I like Oscar Isaac, you know, like, the, this looks kind of neat. I forgot all about it. It just, yeah. Then I saw a little still for it on one of my streaming apps, and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you forgot about it two that's seconds that's later. The story ends there. I also saw Mac the Knife in Moon Knight. They were fighting each other over McDonald's. <laughs> he was trying to get his Big Mac back. He does have that pointy head. He could impale somebody with that thing. I know. He's pretty dangerous. Mm -hmm. Moon Knight versus Mac the, Mac the Knight, right? Mac the Knife. Well, that's the actual song. That's the actual but song. I think the, in the, the commercials, they changed it to Mac the Knight. They did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To it's not a, offend anyone. Right, right. Because it's a, it's a song about a, a, a mobster that kills people with a knife. Right. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, Moon Knight versus Mac the Knight, the sure. McDonald's character. Are you trying to reorganize your keyboard yeah. keys? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta type an email to my mom for Mother's Day. <laughs> all right, all right. I told her P9F12.